Replay Guitar Exchange is your premier independent guitar store. Being independent is good. With all of the major brands, including new, vintage, and pre-owned, you can find the guitar, bass, amp, or accessory you are dreaming of. From vintage to the newest models, Replay Guitar Exchange can help you find that perfect piece. They have industry veteran expert staff, all players like you, down to the owner. You aren't just getting a great guitar, you're getting the Replay difference. Find them online at ReplayGuitar.com and find your dream guitar today. Vinny Tortorich here. Hey man, if you're a fan of Vizzy, you might be a fan of me too. I'm the guy that gets people to lose a lot of weight. I have something free for you guys. This is no clickbait. Just go to VinnyTortorich.com and there's a big banner. It's a free PDF, How to Lose Weight. It's an intro guide to NSNG at VinnyTortorich.com. Go check it out exclusively for anyone who listens to Izzy Presley. Thank you. Hey ladies, Sass Pants Designs will take that rock shirt that everyone has and make it your own in a flattering, sassy, and simple way. There are one-of-a-kind tank tops, lace-up tees, and tube top dresses already in stock. Check out the online store at sasspantsdesigns.com and like Sass Pants Designs on Facebook for special offers and custom orders. That's sasspantsdesigns.com, sasspantsdesigns.com. Sass Pants will make you the envy of the party. RockstarLeatherworks.com is your home for badass rock and roll gear. Featuring 100% handmade leather bands, watches, cuffs, bracelets, and more, Rockstar Leatherworks has something for everybody. Whether you are going to the show or you are in it, you can find something to fit your needs. Choose from a variety of designs or create your own masterpiece. Their bands and watches are second to none. They also ship internationally. Who needs a stage to be a rock star? Check out RockstarLeatherworks.com. Hi, this is Bobby Brown, and welcome to another fucking podcast. You kids with your loud music and your Dan Fogelberg, your Zima, hula hoops, and Pac-Man video games, don't you see people today have attention spans that can only be measured in nanoseconds? See, son, all legends never die. They just lose weight. Like a legend and an out of work from with a lot of light. And on the diehard fans. That's right, it is party time. Hello, Hollywood. Hello, world. And hello, my loyal minions. It is good to see you. And as always, good to be seen. It is Tuesday night, December 4th. Uh, a little bit after 7 p.m. California time. Good evening, everybody. It's another fucking podcast. I am Izzy Presley, your host. Make sure you hit up all of the social media at Real Izzy Presley all the way across the board. Then, of course, the uh, Facebook page for the show. The show page is another effing podcast. Um, Hit that shop button. It's the uh, Tis the Christmas season. You can buy shit, buy T-shirts and stuff for your friends and your family and yourself. Um Podcast shirts, Drunken Summit shirts, I Love Van Hagar shirts, all of them. They are all available. Just uh, just click, the, click that Shop Now button if you want to support the show. You absolutely can, either by buying the shirts or just, you know, hitting up that PayPal. Izzy at Izzy Presley, or I'm sorry, Izzy Presley at Yahoo.com is your PayPal if you want to donate to the show. I always appreciate that. And also, don't forget, you can catch me Monday through Friday. 4 a.m. to 10 a.m. California time on the Monsters of Rock radio network on the Dash Satellite radio network. Always fun. Lots of great tunes, deep cuts, and uh, me bitching about a lot of stuff early in the morning. Mostly because it's early in the morning. But right now, we are welcoming back to the show my co-host for this uh, for the Dwarfs shows, it seems to be, uh, Mr. DJ Will. Izzy Presley. How Hi. are you? Hi. And good, good also, good, it's good to have you back, buddy. Yeah, it's good to be back. And uh, also joining us is uh, the one and only Daryl Dwarf, uh, talking about his brand new book, which is just, is, is it out or is it coming out? Uh, what's uh, what's the scoop on that, some bitch? Uh-huh. You know what? Hold on for a second there. Uh, 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 um, For some reason, you're not coming through on the fucking broadcast. 
What the fuck? No, it's not you. It's nothing on your end. It's nothing on your end. Um, okay, Soundflower. That's right. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I can fix this very, very easily. Uh, just hold tight, S- hold tight. Soundflower, Soundgarden. Soundgarden, okay. Sound glitch. General microphone, audio, video. Uh, gen- okay. Ding, ding, microphone, ding, ding, speakers. Ding, ding, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, 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 say something now, sir. Ding, ding, now, okay. I can hear you. I can hear you fine. Um. Uh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think we got it now. Now, uh, now try it. Hey, you. Can the good people of the yes, world hear Yes, we, we got it now. In the killer dwarves. We can got it now. <laughs> we got yeah. it now. I, I apologize. Uh, the setting was wrong. I thought it was fine. I, I, I just did the Skype update right before I called you, so that's kind of why it probably got fucked up. But anyways, okay. we are, we are no fucking worries. rolling. Uh, Guardian of a yeah. Timekeeper yeah. is See, the name of the yeah. book. So, you did a to pre- answer your question, yeah, I, I did this. Pre, pre-sale. Pre-sale. I did this pre. I sorry, I got the Maple Leafs game on. I got to stop looking at it. <laughs> sorry, over I, over I, time, I, I took me right right off my pro, thought process of what I wanted to say to you. Uh, no, I did a pre-sale thing just for the real close knit Dwarf Nation fan base uh, off my site before the book goes uh, international on Amazon dot com. And Barnes and Noble, and that the real release of the book will actually happen in about two weeks. It'll be announced, and that's when it'll go to those companies for distribution for everybody. But uh, I uh, let things go out on October thirty first on Halloween night, which I thought was a fair night to release it. And uh, I had a large amount of orders come into DunksPirateShop.com. dot com. Nice. They, uh, they just shipped actually last Friday due to a goddamn postal strike, which was a pain in my ass when that all happened up here. But Canada Post is at war for more money up here. And uh, I didn't even get the test copy in my hand. It came in two weeks late and it put everything behind a little bit. But all is well now and all the books were shipped. So oh, people are starting to receive them now for the first time. Oh, we got people chiming in already. Uh, Bruce says, tied with a minute left. No way Dunk's going to be on time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Jacobus. Uh, uh, I love it. Jacobus. I just, I just. Go ahead. Jacobus. Jacobus I just love these hockey right? fans. This... Oh, I know. Scott... Hey, J- hey, Jeff. Jeff. How Scott... are you guys? Scotty Strickland. Uh, Luis Viegas from Heavy Mellow. Uh, yeah, Phil yes. chucking in. Phil, uh, s- 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 sir. Yeah, yeah, Phil. S- Phil's yeah. a great guy. Uh, yeah, he, he runs a, a, a dwarf site on Facebook. Of, oh, nice. It's re- re- really cool. Yeah, he runs his own fan based site that uh, is really fun. Nice. Oh, he also says, He's a good guy. He also he, says, It's okay. The bookmobile is on its way. So there you go. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. So now we talked about the book. Yeah. Let's let's talk about important shit like yeah. uh, um, guys wearing beards when it's not the playoffs and uh, home whites. <laughs> oh, God. No, nah, I'm kidding. I need, I need to. I need to have a sip on that one. Yeah. Mm. No doubt. Um. So uh, what, what? What brought about the book? I mean, what, what, it was just one of those things. Well, like, ah, fuck it. What? I'm gonna write a book. That's a great question because it kind of blindsided everybody, even in my camp. Like, I mean, Russ and I are like ultra close as buddies and bandmates. And I kind of didn't really even discuss it with him what I was doing. It just, I dropped it on him kind of like after I was starting to work on the book deal with the company I was dealing with in Montreal. And and I just, I don't know, man, this is a different one for me. I, a book, it was a bucket list of mine, but I, was not looking at writing my own book for a long time. I, I, I figure another maybe eight, eight years I wasn't thinking of even attempting to write a book because I, I figure I have a lot to do yet. And it was really the death of my father that kind of spawned this whole thing. It got kind of spiritual and weird for me. And, and uh, my dad passed away last September 2nd. And uh, I started writing... Uh, more like memoirs in case I got Alzheimer's or something and couldn't remember my life. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> in, in a weird, you know what I'm saying? In, in a weird way, I was like, I watched that Robin Williams 
doc and I watched the Glenn Campbell doc and things. And I mean, this whole Alzheimer's and these diseases and dementia things that happen to people is a horrible infliction, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I started writing down memories of my dad in case I might be afflicted by it myself and not remember my own past, kind of. So I started really, the whole book came out of memoirs that I started writing a year ago. I just started writing down things about my childhood. That's that's so I would remember them even maybe years from now, maybe twenty years from now if I lived that long. You know what I mean? Oh no, and absolutely. And that's what, yeah, and that's what spawned the book, which was really cool. I didn't write the book for financial gain or or anything like this. I I, I wrote the book for a grieving grieving I was going through for the death of my father, and the book. When I was writing the book, I put in hours every day, every other day I'd start writing, writing, and, and it, it was a great kind of healing thing for me. I felt really good writing about it, and I was laughing and remembering things my dad did, and, and that's how the whole thing came about, man. And then it turned into a, something way bigger than I ever, ever thought it would be, and that's sort of how it happened in a nutshell. Daryl, question for you. Uh, what was your process uh, with... Uh, doing the book, did you have backup notes? Did you update uh, things as you went or as you were inspired? Did you jot down uh, you know, daily notes? I mean, what particular process over over a period of time did you utilize? Well, here's how it went, Will. I, uh, by the way, great talking to you, Will. Of I always course. love uh, our chats. It's nice. <laughs> more, um, more to come. There was a period about two months into the memoir thing I was doing that instantly changed. And then I went into this mode that I was writing a book and, and that was, it was a crossroads. It, it stopped from being notes and jotting actual full stories. It, it, I went into story mode. I started telling stories. It, it went into, it went into a full book at that point. And then I made the decision. I go, I'm going to, I'm going to start writing this as a writer as an author and, and write a book on these stories because a theme started becoming apparent from some of the things that had happened. And, and what, what, it, what it was, was I have had a ton of near death experiences in my life, near death mishaps talking. <laughs> I've just had from the time I was three years old up until today, even I've had a lot of close calls. And when I was starting the memoir thing, my dad was involved in some of the close calls. He saved my life a couple of times. And that's what really turned it around. And I started writing full chapters about that. And then it got really kind of cool and freaky, kind of like a Final Destination movie, you know? Right. And so then I got then I got professional people involved. And when I started working with this Can Am book company in Montreal, they they brought an editor in from Chicago to work with me. They so go, oh, you got you're on to something really cool here. This is true life stuff that you went through, and you know we're going to bring an editor in to help you and you know to write and to, to write not write it. I, I wrote the whole thing, but running an editor to for you know punctuation and stuff. Man, I got four years of English in high school. Did I just see the Leafs score and win the game? You did with two <laughs> seconds left. Yes! <laughs> Woo! I'm sorry. But, oh, come on, boys. That is fantastic. I just love I just love that hockey club. But but anyway, yeah, that that's that's sort of what happened. And then I got ten chapters of these ten near near misses that I had, and that is what the book is, and the Guardian of a Timekeeper is partially my dad. He saved my life a couple of times and I don't want to give the whole book away, but that is that is the theme of the book. That's what yeah. it is. So it's, it's not just your run-of-the-mill uh, stories from the road. Dude, there was Jack Daniels and cocaine. You know, <laughs> it's more than that. It's so far from that. And that's that's what I like about it. it it's not about my rock career. It, it, it I mean, obviously there's some pictures, lots of pictures in it, and things that bleed into my career from day one, but... Yeah, it's not your the dirt Motley Crue in any way, you know. And like Russ and I uh, talked about writing a book about Killer Dwarf's career one day, you know. So that would be something that we would do together. Either we were talking about maybe maybe writing it together, 
we weren't sure how we were going to go about that because we really want to do a documentary on the band more than nice. anything. So I'm not I'm not sure if we would do the full movie version documentary kind of thing or maybe the book. I mean, it's up to us really what we want to do, and we we just we talk about it in depth. But this book I didn't want to be about killer dwarfs mm. because I mean, you know, I, that's not why I was writing it. It wasn't about the killer dwarfs or or even my career, but. Like I said, it's very autobiographical, so it touches on me being a drummer from seven years old and all that. Yes, that's all in there. So I think it's got the best of both worlds. It's a short book. It's got the best of both worlds for the fan of the band, though. You will get some insight from the book about the bands I've been in. Mm -hmm. You said uh, seven years old as you started playing drums. Who who did you want to be? Well, my dad... Again, my dad's a big part of all this. He's a jazz piano player. He was a, a very pro jazz piano player in his day. Um, he kind of bought me my first drum kit, and he moved me towards jazz music, of course. And he got me these drum lessons with this drummer named Doug Swain, who was a, a famous Canadian big band drummer on the circuit you know, all over North America. He was a hired gun He'd go play big band shows all over. And uh, he gave me a year's worth of lessons that my dad put in. And I kind of, after the year of the lessons, I kind of moved away on my own. And he gave me enough artillery to to move on. And I discovered rock and roll, you know. And uh, through my brother listening to Black Sabbath and different things, and my friend's brother, was really into Johnny Winter and Fog Hat and all these bands and Alice Cooper. And I started as a young kid, nine or 10 started leaning my ear towards rock and roll, you know, and, and, uh, the jazz stuff was great. It taught me a lot. It taught me to read music, got me on my way. And then I just discovered rock and roll and went that path on my own. And the rest is kind of history. I was self-taught after that. Mm-hmm. Hey, Daryl, uh, is there uh, are there any other existing biographies that you've read that you're aware of that mirrored any aspect of yours? Yeah, that you know, good good question because I don't I don't read a whole <laughs> lot of books. Wait, stop I, there! I, Hold I, it! Stop I, there! I, Say no more! I, I swear, I swear, I you need some education, God, son. I, I do. <laughs> I do, <laughs> but I read books. So I do, but I don't read them like some people read one book a day, one a week. One, I'm more like I'll find time to maybe go through one a month. You know, I read Joe Perry's book, a few people like that. But in no way did I take anything from any other book. This this was so, my thing was so personal. Well, of course it was personal. It just, but the just... whole thing was so personal. It, you know what I mean? It just it didn't. It's nothing like any other book that I've read really. I, I don't know. Uh, so no, I didn't, it wasn't like I was borrowing anything from another book or, or a theme or anything. I, in fact, I, the whole year I didn't read anything while I was writing my book. I didn't read one thing. I just got into my book and didn't read anything, nothing at all. Well, it was, it was more or less of influence, but reading other people's stories, their upbringings, how they got into music, did anything ironically, uh, become something that you did at the same time or that was sort of are you just saying a coincidence from other maybe someone else's book kind of thing yeah if you think about it Um, being influenced uh growing up a neighborhood surrounding school being bullied any particular thing of any you know biography that you've read that mirrored something that happened in your own life not borrowed, uh, not borrowed, just curious. Didn't really see that many similarities, to tell you, to tell you the truth. Other than, well, other than most musicians all start out at a young age, let's say, and possibly their fathers bought them their instruments and stuff. Yeah, I mean, there's there's could be some coincidences, some other books there, but... Pounding on pots I, and pans. It's, just, and it's a different deal, Well, This, this okay. book is, is just, it's a different deal, because it, it doesn't, it, it the whole path of the book is these mishaps that have happened to me. So it, it's more of a spiritual kind of thing, guardian angel type deal. That's that's what this book's based on. So it's, was, it's a different animal, man. Was uh, was Russ's response to your book um, kind of your same response to his uh, his solo record that's coming out? 
<laughs> yeah, the one I didn't know about. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I know. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. uh, no, no, man. I, I. That's funny. I love you, man. That's great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I read all that, and uh, you know, I just read that in the press release, Rush, Rush's thing. So then I knew that he was doing another record. That's how I found out. Oh. I knew we were doing another record. And oh, then I, okay. I read it in, in the EMP press release. Oh, he's doing another record too. Oh, whatever. That's fine. Yeah, it's fine by me. Yeah, all good. I mean, of course. I mean, you said you guys are doing another record. Uh, when can we expect that? Yeah. Well, it's all. I mean, with with the deal with EMP, we were we were basically told we they would like it in two night and like next year. So we're we're looking at the writing process kind of started already, and and you know I'd probably say. Maybe by this time next year, we'll, there'll be a new Killer Doris record. How many songs you have uh, done so far, or at least demoed or riffs and stuff? You didn't Are hear. Are you him. talking to me? Yeah, no, I didn't. Not uh, that time. He said, uh, "How many? Um, uh, how many uh, songs you you have? Any songs uh, demoed or riffed or uh, anything in the uh, thus far? No, nothing's demoed yet at all. Okay, and we might not even demo anything. We probably won't demo it. We'll just." Uh, do some intense rehearsing and, and pre-production on our own and, and then just go in and knock it out. There's there's about six works, six songs that are in the works right now. All right. And we'll probably, we'll, we'll shoot for 10, I'm sure. Nice. Well, that's a good, that's a good size for a record. Yeah, that's yeah. what she said. Well, old school. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 10 tracks is good, right? Yeah, yeah I'd, for sure. I'd be happy with that. Uh, I mean, going back to the book, is there anything that you learned about yourself that I guess you weren't really aware of while you were writing it? Um, yeah, I just, yeah, I think I think I did learn a lot from the book, actually. And, and like I said, I, the, the 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 coolest thing about the book was when I worked with Sharon Lax, this editor. You know, I learned a lot about English language and stuff. On an educational part, that was that was my freezing up. Yeah, we're freezing up. Just hold on, little uh, connection issue here. Just just keep talking. You're good. You know, I a lot of punctuation. Yeah, yeah. Um, (laughs) hold on, you're you're freezing up here, and that's not it's not as a writer like writing. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I said. Uh, you were freezing up, so we missed a yeah, lot of that. I know actually. we're getting. I got. You have a. a I have a okay, like, we'll wait till the connection. Wait, wait till the connection comes back. There we go. Yeah, you're kind of jumping all over the place. Long distance tech gremlins. Oh, there yeah? you go. Ghost in the machine. Am I back? Yeah, you're back. You're good. So you learned a lot about uh, the English language yeah. and punctuation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, well, working with with a real editor. I mean, we we back and forth with the book right I, like she she left the book as i wrote it am i still breaking up or yeah know? here here's what i'm gonna do um we'll just uh i'm just gonna do this um message me because i don't have your number message me your number i'm gonna call you from a uh, 323 number and it'll come right through the uh mm-hmm. through the speakers and we won't have to worry about this i just wanted to look at you while we we're talking because it makes it funner you know what i mean I got you. All right, yeah. Message, okay, uh, yeah. Hit me up on Facebook. Message me the uh, the number, and we'll uh, we'll do it that way. And uh, while we do that, we will uh, play a couple commercials. It's another effing podcast. Do make sure you check out Beater Amplification. By the way, Beater Amplification. That's two E's. B E E T E R. Balls out. Rock and roll tone. Three channels of testicular fortitude. Heck yeah. These things are so versatile. You get the old school Metallica tone. You get that old school ACDC tone. You get that old school clean Fender ass tone. Brandon from Black and Blue was in studio a couple weeks ago, and he didn't want to stop playing because it sounded so good. So we are going to take a short little break. We'll get Dunk called up on the telephone here, and uh, it's another effing podcast. Rockwood Saloon Authentic Apparel takes rock and roll fashion to a new level. With their tees and tanks for men and women. They also make custom shirts, jackets, vests, pants, hoodies, beanies, and more. The Rockwood Graphics Department can design anything from your logo. 
t-shirt design, promo posters, band swag, and printed at great prices. From tour shirts and custom stage gear to killer threads for the street to the stage, Rockwood Saloon has it all. Rockwood Saloon, authentic rock and roll apparel for stage and street. World Tour tested for quality, comfort, style, and durability. Check them out at www.rockwoodsaloon.com. That's rockwoodsaloon.com. If you need to promote your band or business or just want to stylize, personalize, or customize your ride, check out vid-decals.com. Want to create and customize your own stickers representing your band or make your own bumper sticker? Vid Decals can do it. All stickers are printed on quality vinyl and can be placed on any flat surface. Stickers are an affordable way to promote your band or business. Go to vid-decals.com to get started. That's vid-decals.com. Vid-decals.com. Retro Arcade brings Minnesota and surrounding areas arcade games from the days gone by. All of those great games from pizza joints and arcades are available in cocktail units and custom machines. Dozens of favorites from your youth in one machine to complete your game room or man cave. Retro Arcade also sells and services your favorite pinball machines. Find them at Facebook.com slash 80 Arcade. That's Facebook.com slash 80 Arcade. Retro Arcade. Your youth is just one click away. Hey, what's going on? This is Tom Arnold. I like uh, fat women and cocaine. And you're listening to Izzy Presley here on another uh, fucking podcast. And uh, I know Izzy uh, from Cocaine Anonymous meetings. I've actually uh, seen him at the meetings with uh, uh, Ace Havad Johnson from, uh, I probably shouldn't say this out loud, but Ace has got a bad coke problem. And uh, his sponsor is uh, is uh, Josh Todd from, and again, I shouldn't say this out loud, but Josh is a sponsor for Buck Cherry. He's addicted to upskirt porn. And, uh, and they're both being sponsored by the Eagles. The, uh, the whole band, the Eagles. There's, anyways, uh, another fucking podcast right here with Izzy Presley. And uh, call your sponsor, fucking A. <laughs> okay, we're back. Um, this Google thing, Red, this Google thing is still calling, and I don't know what the fuck is going on, but we still have them on Skype. Um, all right, well, well so we're good. We we'll, we're, we'll just go through this. We'll just roll we'll with wrap it. it up. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. We'll roll with it for now. Uh. Well, what do you got? Okay. The connect the connection's back. The connection's back. Yeah, the connection is back. <laughs> mhm. My computer's being it's a bitch, of course. Well. Uh, we're having a rough night, people. It's okay. That's all right. though. It's, well, that gar- it's, that, it's that fucking guardian of a timekeeper mystique. It's all the voodoo. <laughs> anyway, getting back to what we were saying before you went there. This this Sharon Lax woman that I work with was ultra cool and she was really on me. You know, talking to a movie producer about my book. She was more on to me about that than anything else. She thought the book could be a script for a movie. And I told her I wasn't interested in that at all. And she said, please, if you know any movie industry people, you should at least let them look at this. And I said, I just want to put out the book. That's it. So it was kind of interesting right off to start working with her that she was pushing me towards the movie industry part. I didn't, I, I kind of got it, but I didn't because she was saying this Final Destination vibe was a part of my book. And to me, that's not what it is. But a good, a good, it was interesting. A good chance, a good chance that that's sort of the modius operandi of uh, anyone who works in publishing. That if they are really gung ho about uh, a project, that's the one of the first handful of things that they're going to say to sort of hype up the author, let them know that hey, you really got something here, and just sort of boost it up. And in, in there might be something there in her eyes, but in the context of. How you approach this? Yeah, you just want the book out. Let's let's let the let's let's get through that first before we get any lofty goals in the in the ether. Exactly, Will. That, that's exactly how I felt. I mean, I mean, I was so far away from even thinking of anything bigger than whatever. I just, I mean, the book. Like I said, the book was a very soul searching experience for me, and like I said, it was driven by the death of my dad, and it was a grieving process that I was going through, and the book helped me with that process. That's, that's sort of all it was, and and so what I love the most about writing the book was that it helped me through a year's worth of a grieving process of my dad, who was ninety three years old, who. who I was happy for him that he moved on. He was just so done at that point. And it, he was in a home and he wasn't the guy. He's in a World War II pilot. He's a vet and he was a, he had a great life. And, and you know, it's just, it, it's kind of a, a trip to see what we go through as human beings as we age. It's just a fucking horrible situation to get old in general, you know? Indeed. So, 
it's just part of part of living and dying. It's part of part of life, man. We all got to go through it. Right, absolutely. And actually, you bring up World War II, and I want to I want to ask you about this because the reason I'm bringing it up is because I've been working on a project for the past freaking you know three and a half years. Um, that's right. based on my buddy's grandfather while he was in World War II. We have all the letters and yada yada yada. Um, wow, cool. Did uh, did did your did did your dad talk about war experiences, or was it something he kind of just kind of hid, or was uh, it a rough subject? Uh, no, he. I get. I get no because luckily for my dad, I guess he he didn't see super amounts of death in action. He was uh, stationed in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. And uh, he was in the Air Force, and he uh, he never really saw, like, serious Battle of Britain type stuff. So he just put in his tour of duty, and then the war ended in 1945. So, okay. I mean, a lot, he's, he, he escaped uh, seeing blood and guts and, and a lot of that, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I should, uh, I should, I should well, send, I should he send was, you. He was still – he. I should send you those letters if you want to read them. They're they're pretty yeah. in, in exhilarating, you know. So that was it. Was this gentleman like overseas? Yeah, he was. And he going was. Into uh, he was in the South Pacific. Um, you know, we have letters talking him talking about his first yeah. kill and just all this weird. It's it's, it's yeah. really yeah, really that's weird. heavy. Yeah, yeah, that's the real. That's heavy. That's heavy shit, man. That's that's the real deal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, my dad was spared from some of that, buddy. But he was a pilot in, in World War Two. You know, he just, I, I think he, he I, he's never, he never told me anything about anything bad, anything mm-hmm. like you know, no stories like that. No. Let's get to some uh, listener comments. Uh, Ward says, "What up, Dunk?" Ward. Hey, Ward. Uh, yeah, Ward. Ward Kerr, man. That's Ward right, Kerr, Arizona. That's right. Uh, you know, Bruce. Ward. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, Bruce says uh, Jerry Edmonton influence as well. I'm sure. Um, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Jerry's in my book. That's my cousin from Steppenwolf. Oh, the wow! From Steppenwolf. I I did not. Yeah. Well, did you know that? I didn't know that. I did not. Oh, know you that. didn't know that? No. Yeah, that's my family. Yeah, that's in the book. Uh, my family. Like I said, I grew up in a musical family. My dad was jazz jazz piano player, but my cousins are Mars. Bonfire, who wrote uh, "Born to Be Wild," and Jerry Edmonton's his brother, and he was the drummer in Steppenwolf. Wow! So that's my dad's si- and my dad's sister's sons are those two. And Jerry was killed in an accident in San Diego, California, in 1993, and unfortunately, on no, uh, Thanksgiving. So that's why I celebrate American Thanksgiving every year up here. I do it in honor of him, and uh, we have a big dinner. And plus, I live lived in california for seven years so i got i used to celebrating it on your day anyway so right. i just continued to go back to canada in 2000 i have two turkey days man that's the Canadian right in october and american so you so you do do it american style with turkey and mashed potatoes and gravy and corn and all that kind of good shit pumpkin pie absolutely all of it pumpkin and apple that's a hearty tribute yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we also mm-hmm. got uh, oh, Scotty says, "Awesome, have a new disc to warm up the twenty twenty cruise." That's it. That's just here. All right, so this is uh, getting more fucking problems here. Let's try this again. Uh, try- I think we cut out there. Yeah, we cut out there. Hold on, again. hold on, hold on. We're gonna try the try this call one more time. Just uh, let's see, calling. Okay. Oh, it's ringing! It's ringing! Ring, ring, it's ring, ring. ring. Hello. We got gotcha. you. It's like we're. Hello? Hello? Hello. Hello. We got gotcha. you. It's like you do. All right. All right. So I'm going to I'm gonna shut the Skype down because it's going to. So, inter- yeah. Wicked all right. delay, eh? The wicked delay. All right. Cool. Well, I can hear you finally. <laughs> yeah. Perfectly. Well. Right. Uh, yeah. I'm there s- you are. There, talk- there's yeah. that voice. That, like, talk- well, you should have heard on the Skype. You were like mini me. You're like. So, Darrow, what's going on? We didn't. You were the little, <laughs> little man on that Skype thing. Now there's your big DJ voice. Hey, it's Will. Talk DJ to Will you. here. Talk to your, talk to your All right, host. we're good. All right. All right, we're good. We're good. Yeah. Hey, hey Daryl, any, anything revealing in the book that will that'll be new to family and friends that read it? 
a lot. There'll, oh. there'll oh. probably be a lot, a lot of things. Yeah. And, uh, you know what? I mean, you know, when you're writing something like this and you're writing from the heart and you're writing true stories, you know, there's a part of you that's sitting here, you know, wondering if it's going to hurt somebody's feelings. But I mean, that's to me, that's, I can't be thinking about how people are thinking about what I'm writing in the family. I mean, I'm writing truths, things that really happen, right? You got to be honest. Well, yeah, I, well you do. I, I mean, I, I, I didn't embellish anything, man. I just told it as it was, and maybe maybe my sister will read it and think, why did you say that about your dad or something? Because I said something, but that's just the way it rolls. I, 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 that was the great thing about it to me. It was, it was a big thing, soul-searching, the whole book, for, for me, you know, on a personal level. Mm-hmm. I think that's the art of writing a book. That's, that's yeah. the cool thing about books in general. That's books that I've ever read that moved me were... Things that you're like, wow! I kind of can't believe he said that, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> right? 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you know, I, I almost want to give stuff away, but I don't. It's nice well, to just uh, read it. Uh, you you talk about like near death experiences. I mean, can you give us a little taste without giving every, everything away? I mean, you said the first one was at what three years old? Yeah. Well, okay. I'll just tell you that I have the book in front of me here. I'll just. I'll just go through the chapters, and then uh, you can kind of tell what what might transpire out of them, or I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about it. So there's ten chapters. Chapter number one is called The Bus. Chapter two is The Tree in the Pool. Uh, chapter three is or chapter three is The Lake. Chapter four is The Tree in the Ground Forts. Uh, chapter five is Car... I know, this is a trap, dude. Chapter 5 is Car Accident Number 1. Chapter 6 is The O.D. Chapter 7 is The Earthquake. Chapter 8 is Canpar. Chapter 9, Car Accident Number 2. And Chapter 10 is The Stairs. Now, all these chapters are are mishaps that happened to me in my life over the course from 3 years old to today that possibly have killed many people. And... uh, uh, in the same fashion, uh, and I just was lucky on every one of them somehow. So I kind of walked away, am I, walked am, away from them. In. Am I going to be right to assume that the earthquake is about the Northridge earthquake here in California? Yeah, really close. Yeah, it was one that hit before uh, Northridge when I was staying at the Oakwood Apartments. Uh-huh. About three years prior, there was an earthquake that I was in. It was the only one I've ever been in, in my life, but it wasn't near the earthquake, but it wasn't near the earthquake of Northridge, but it was on, it was that fault line, the exact fault line that took Northridge down. So it was, uh, the you know, it was the Oakwood in the Oakwood in, uh, Sherman Oaks, which isn't far off from there. Well, you, so, you, Will's been out here his whole life. Do you, do you, uh, recall this one? Oh yeah. The good old San Andreas fault. Uh, no joke. Um, Ford's, <laughs> 4 a.m. in the morning on, uh, on the faithful day in, in the 94, so pretty intense. Out of the chapters, uh, out of every mention of all the chapters, Daryl, sadly and luckily, I can recollect five of those apply to me. And uh, Really? Yeah, yeah, childhood stuff, teens. Yeah, well, well and, this is what I'm figuring. I'm figuring I, I'm not the only one that I'm, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this book probably and just they just never ever thought to tell anybody about it or talk about it that's right. sort of what what happened with me there was just so many things that happened in succession over over my whole life that when i when i started writing the things about my dad he saved my life twice in the book that's when i started putting two and two together going man i've had a lot of shit happen to me that's kind of weird like that's crazy you know so my mom always was one to say there's a guardian angel in her life and all this, and it all started coming out. And that's what the book's about. Will, 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 do you have any uh, near-death experiences? Oh, well, 
I want to want to want to up the ante here, but I think of um, you know a skateboard incident, a car. Yeah, there was. Yeah, close calls. Right? I'm not talking near death. Like yeah, that. close calls. Close just, calls. Yeah, it's a, right. Like these close calls where you're going, holy shit! I was this close to being dead. Yep. But yeah. I, I just the truck just missed me. If you were yeah. on your skateboard or whatever, oh, yeah. that kind of shit. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And that and then that's all this is, and that, and that's what makes you just wonder. You go. It's a divine intervention thing. Is it? Do you have family members watching over you? You don't know about it. It's just, yeah. it's it's crazy, man. Yeah, some of the shit that goes on. Yeah, and uh, that's what's cool about the Guardian of the Timekeeper. The book brings all that to light. Mm -hmm. That's what it does. And in it's my life, what happened to me? Of course, and it's very cathartic that you now put pen to paper. Now it's you know coming out in the book. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, wow, it's just like, I, I you know, the, the best thing I love about it is that I just, I didn't see myself doing this a year ago or two years ago. I didn't see myself coming up with this. This happened on its own. This book, book wrote itself. It, it, it totally happened on its own. It just, and it, and it was good for my head. It, good for me. Right. That was, that was the ultimate about it. It was, it, it was, it was good for me, man. It made me feel better about the death of my dad. And I'm dealing with my mom now. She's 90 and she's, you know, going through her own hell of grieving, being with my dad for 65 years. And I'm kind of like her power of attorney. So I got to deal with that. I mean, there's, my life's complicated right now outside of rock and roll and the killer dwarfs. You know, my life's pretty complicated at this point. It was therapy. You know? mm -hmm. It exactly was. All right, because be, because I'm a narcissistic asshole, do you want to hear my uh, my my almost experience with death? I'd love to hear it. Why not? So I was. We've all gone through it, right? Um, At some point, I would have been. Yeah. I would have been 17 years old. It was the summer of I want to say 1990, and uh, I was driving a Mercury Cougar XR7 two door that had an eight track. And it had a moonroof, and I was with my buddy Skippy, and we were driving out to the boneyard, to the to the junkyard, and it was on a two lane blacktop. And we decide to try to, well, I decide, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna pass these cars because they're going too goddamn slow. So mm -hmm. of course I get in that in that passing lane, which is the oncoming lane, and as soon as I get in that passing lane, I see a fucking semi coming right at me, and I'm sure Skippy, if he ever hears this, he will remember this. <laughs> <laughs> but literally it, it it was maybe five feet i oh, I, I i got i got back over into our lane after i passed the cars and it was probably five feet i mean it was that close i mean one oh. a split second later there'd be no izzy presley tommy elwell would have been dead oh dude see that's that's literally chapter there's an incident that one accident what is that chapter it's uh yeah, chapter five is is almost exactly what you just said, but the wow. ending wasn't good. The end, yeah, it was. That's exactly what that chapter was. Is two car accidents in my book, serious ones, like heavy ones. One's the killer horse one, which yeah, obviously, that's yeah, second. So, yeah, that's obvious. It's the second last chapter. I go into real heavy detail on how it all went down. And uh, but that that one, the, the one you just mentioned, this is exactly how that accident happened, passing a car that happened when I was only 16 on, on the road touring with my band Sphinx, my first band. And I was in a van full of gear with the, with a crew guy. And, uh, he, he was passing. And the guy, I swear the guy that we were passing, we were passing down on a hill on single lane highway like that. And the guy sped up and we were having a hard time getting by him. We couldn't get by him. He's, we're, I swear the guy sped up to this day. We were trying to pass him. And then ensuing insaneness happened after that. Not with the semi, but like I said, I I won't give it all away. But that that sounds that, just that. like dude, that sounds just like Los Angeles drivers. They see that fucking uh the signal on and they speed up. <laughs> So like they're they, they're pissed you're passing them right exactly but you and speed but, up, uh, you prick. I, but i'm gonna i'm gonna Come on. i'm going to assume that uh what whatever was coming your way was not a semi no no it wasn't right no, in that chapter a, a massive accident happened though in yeah that, in well i but situation. still you got a van with all that gear and i look i've been you know i've driven cube vans 
filled with fucking PAs, you know, to the nuts, yeah. Tetris to the nuts. Oh, and I'm thinking to myself, it's yeah. like, dude, if we get in a head on fucking wreck, we're dead. Yep. Dead. Yeah, I know. All I, that. I, well, I know. All right. That. You're just, I mean, how else? How else? So, All so, the weight distribution. Yep. Well, I know. So without, like I said, I don't want to be a spoiler on my, every chapter in my book, but, but to, to, to just put it out there, what you just said, exactly. You should be dead. That's the thing. You should be dead. Why, why, why like what, you know, sometimes you, you just, I'm not a religious guy. It yeah. Dudes, yeah me, me either. But a lot, a lot of this stuff is that went on, you know, <laughs> It's like what the hell, yeah. like dude? It's a, it's, there's some sort of force in play, divine intervention. I don't know what you call it, but in my case, there's been some shit gone on in my life with with something. Yeah. I don't know, and like I say, I explain it very well in the book how I feel about it all. Hey, Daryl, did you um, once once the book is out, once uh, fans have an opportunity to get their hands on it and read it, um, any consideration of making this? into an audiobook or potentially doing reading some excerpts from the book either at shows or at some point uh, like a, during a, like a you know a sound check or something for fans only anything that well you know only a smart man like you will would come up with something like that <laughs> you know that that is that's a, a great possibility of maybe reading some of it uh, you know that's a kind of a cool idea uh the other thing that I, I don't I want to stay away from the audio book though I, I just I just don't want the book to be available on on only in hard copy only that's it with this one I just I don't want it available in audio or text on the, on, on the internet anywhere if you know what I mean oh, I yeah. just I just want yeah, it to be you. available it, yeah I just, well so much has gone on with downloading and blah 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 just yeah. with music and and books are no different i mean dealing with this company that i deal with montreal we, we had a great discussion about rock and roll versus books and distribution and, and record deals versus book deals and blah blah blah. and man there is such a similarity to the whole thing and, and their world in the book world is changing a lot too right they're a little late they're a little little late at it than we are with cds and, and sales and downloading but they're they're feeling it and they're getting there right so i'm uh guarding my guardian of a time keeper book with you know well dude chains all over it. When, when, it. when i when i drove back to minneapolis somebody handed me a cd that had sebastian box book on it you know for the for the road trip and for 13 hours all i heard was Dude, there was Jack <laughs> Daniels and cocaine. Oh, oh my God! Oh, you know? that's what that's all about. Yeah, it's actually, it's... Baz telling this, reading the book. Yeah, dude. Literally, oh. it's dude. So yeah. it's like I had to listen to Sebastian Bach for like thirteen hours. Holy shit! You did him <laughs> to the bone. Oh, dude, <laughs> that's <you>. good, man. <laughs> You're good. I know that boy really well. <laughs> oh, I know. You're fucking know. hosers. You're all hosers. Mm. Oh, God. I know. I love that. Oh, that must have been hilarious. Did your drive go by quick? Uh, no, <laughs> no, because it was the 13, because it was 13 hours of dude. Yeah, dude. Skid row. Dude, it was hilarious. I had dude. fucking, um, I, I had uh, Jason Christopher who played base for Sebastian for a, for a couple of years on the show and it was literally us going back and forth for like a half an hour doing a Sebastian Bach impression. <laughs> yeah, right. Is that that guy we met? I, I think that's the guy we met that does it. He Lep. does him amazing. Is it I bet it's the same guy on more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Left-handed left-handed that's bass player. Him, right? No. Yeah, that, no, 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 no. He no, was this is a different dude. Different guy, yeah, different guy. Yeah, and he he's an imperson. He does impersonations of people. This guy, <laughs> this is the same guy. We met him on work, and anyway, he did Sebastian. Like, if you close your eyes, it was just him. It's, a, it, it's a second this guy career. Was so good. It's a second career almost. Hey, hey. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of going back to the book, as far as you'd mentioned distribution, what is a distribution um, for the initial pressing? Do you, yeah. If, do so, you know? Let me yeah. Let me explain how I chose to do to, to do to do my thing. There's lots of different ways you can go about putting out a book. I mean, you can you can shop a book like a record deal, 
and try to go to a, you know, go to a company and to give you a publishing deal and give you money and the old try P&D. to find you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. The same, the same laws mm-hmm. apply almost to trying to find a record deal, right? But I went into this immediately because I had my own record label. I went into it immediately with that I was not going to give up any of my publishing at all. I'm keeping 100 percent of my publishing. I searched out the right company for me, which is a company called Canon Books in Montreal, and what they do is they help an author publish his own book and put it out and do it pro. And they were just an amazing company to work with. So what I did is I put up all the cash. It, that, that's all it is. It's just, it's all about money. Do, do you want to finance your own thing and put up all your own money? Or do you want to search out people to give you money to do everything, including manufacturing, but then they'll give you a quarter as in 25 cents right. per book and they will take $19. <laughs> Like, right, like rock and roll. It, yeah, I was just saying, it just sounds just like the music industry, <laughs> except no not as bad. It's the same shit, uh, and I knew it was, and I, but I've never wrote a book before, so I learned the first month I was dealing with this company, I learned learned all these rules and all the same shit, and then I went over with the guy about my experiences, all the record deals I signed, he goes, wow, is that ever crazy, I know nothing about music business, but... I'm a book guy, and, and he goes, I can't believe the similarities. I go, similarities is exactly the same. It's no different. Right, so, right. So what I did, what, what I sleep great at night because I, I control everything still. I own 100% of, of the publishing, and I just signed, they just did a deal with me for Amazon and Barnes & Noble, and that's all I need. They're the Fuck powerhouses. Yeah. Of dis- they're, they're the powerhouses of distribution. So I just I signed a deal with that. They take a little bit more. Yeah, they do. I'm just giving you the skinny and I'm telling the right. truth about what, what right. I did here. It's a learning thing for all of us. And right. uh, you know what? Yeah, they're taking a bit more. They're a powerhouse company, Amazon. Of course they are. But everything else I control, you know, and I sell my book straight out on my website and, and I have hard copies everywhere I go, whether it's rock shows or whatever I do. And I control it all and I pay for it all. And I sleep good at night and nobody can take my book away from me dude yeah. that, that's all it. that matters that is all that matters and amazon is king right now so mm-hmm. just fucking being on there and fucking you doing know what it. you do you know yeah you, you know it, right so i just i just went towards the biggest company which is amazon and barnes and noble those two are doing together and you know what that's that's all i need i got my website and i got those powerhouse people that are worldwide and, and I can just shoot a link to anybody if they're afraid of going on my site and they don't trust PayPal or whatever, what I am. Or they don't, or they don't trust you. (laughs) Or they don't trust the pirate, which I don't blame them. (laughs) Ah. That's the reason why we're called, it's the reason why we're called pirates, but if they don't, if they, if they don't feel comfortable about being on my website, they can go to a secure, safe place like Amazon where they buy toilet paper or whatever else they buy from Amazon and they can purchase Guardian the Timekeeper. That's right. That's right. And let me let, set up. let me say this. I completely trust PayPal and my PayPal is Izzy Presley at Yahoo.com. So if you yeah. would like if you would like to support the show, support another fucking podcast, you can PayPal you go. Izzy at Izzy Presley at Yahoo.com just by going to the PayPal app or the PayPal website. That was a very it's bad awesome. Gene. That was a very bad Gene Simmons impersonation. Shameless. Um, but uh, what we're gonna do is uh, we so got. You're right. That's good. Yeah. I love PayPal. They're great. Great. Fuck great yeah. Company. Yes, I do. It's uh, one more time. That's Izzy at, Izzy Presley at Yahoo dot com. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so we got a couple more listener comments, and then we'll uh, get all of your um, social media and website information so people can get in touch with you. Uh, let's great. see. Uh, Jacoba says, give your family, family, our love, all of you. That was the nicest thing I've ever heard Jacoba say. Had nothing to do with, you know, uh, cock, you know? No, he's a, he's a classic, great lad, that guy. Come on, man. He's he's a sweetheart of a guy. And you know what? I'm going, I'm flying to Florida this weekend, which I want to talk about before we go. Yeah. 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 Sure. I get to say that. Absolutely. Hopefully I see Jeff. Absolutely. And, and AJ. Because we love AJ. AJ. Right. Maybe yeah, too. I don't AJ. know. Yeah. Is he, in, is he in Florida as well? Yes, he is. And I think yeah, him, he is. Well, him, and, him and Jeff are in the same town. Yeah, they are. Okay. So maybe I will see both of them. I don't know. 
We'll uh, see. Let's but see uh, I'm doing a book signing there, so you go oh, do wow. the commercial. Go do the book com- the, the commercial. Are you going to do a commercial right now? No, 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 no. What are you doing? No, no. Oh, I'm no. just uh, I'm just going through listener comments right now. Um, oh, okay. So, yeah, get that over with. Then yeah. I'll talk about my trip to Tampa. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Lorraine Green says, "I love the dwarfs, baby." Number one fan, Scotty Strucklin says, hey, "Izzy, you nailed that impersonation, dude. I don't know what you're talking about." Um, <laughs> Hoser's rule. Uh, yeah. Ward says, oh, "I would have thrown the CD out the window." All right. <laughs> Dude, you really do that well. Dude, thank you. I appreciate that. I, I really do. Uh, Bruce wants to know how are the sales going so far? Second printing coming up. I don't think we've gotten through the first printing, have we? Well, no. That's a, that's a great I, I'm overwhelmed with the advanced sales. I did an advanced sale thing. So I got a hard run done, and I only sold it on my pirate shop to, uh, as of Halloween. It came out on Halloween. The, the actual official release will be in about two weeks when it hits Amazon. But I did a thing for the fans where I autographed every copy and personalized it, and I put it oh, out dude, there, awesome. and, and it and it went off. It did great. It did way bigger sales than I expected. You got like I a, had to hire people to help me with it because like it a, got it was too many sales for me to just deal with. So I had to get some help. <clears throat> but it was uh, I was impressed. The first run is going to be gone by the end of Tampa. I figure. Did Did you run a into the copy. Did you run into the Adam Carolla problem where uh, they just had like um, post-it notes on each book and then you forgot to sign a couple books so people got the book with just a post-it note with like their name on it? No. I I was very... I I can't... That's hilarious. Dude, I had to really get my shit together and pay attention to detail and not drink any rum and and make sure I signed all these books. Funny funny how that works, isn't it? Funny the truth. yeah, well, no, I had to sit down for days and really pay attention to detail and, and actually, because I'm, I'm personalizing each book to each person, right? Oh, their dude, name, that's awesome. Their personal name. So I had a list of papers. They gave me a stack of papers, and I just went through each one. They were, when they went to America, the, a lot of the books sold in America. God bless you guys. And, uh, you know, I had a stack of um, forms that they gave me that were, you know, customs forms, right? So that would, that helped me because I could go through the customs forms and say, oh, this is from Sheila, whatever, and I'd sign it. And I, I just did that for days this last week. I just went through it all, and it shipped Friday. Last Friday, all the books shipped in Canada, and some went to England, some went all over the place. It was really cool. It was exciting for me. Absolutely, because you got to figure, you're already a month plus into awareness, and it's not properly um, out in the... Yeah, I know, but but I love that. Yeah, it is good, and I love that those initial, they're really my hardcore fans that bought that book. They're the real fans of the band and myself that that went out of their way to go find my site and buy the book advance before it came out. And you know what? They're all going to be reading it by this week, you know, at at some point, and we'll see what their reaction is, good or bad. Well, I mean, we'll see what it's going to be. So it's a nice tester of of a demographic all over North America and Europe and different places the book went, even before it hits Amazon. And hopefully we can have some reviews to give Amazon, which, you know, Amazon's good with that. They they like the reviews. they, They like all that. So, so that's cool. Let's see how that goes. Uh, Scotty wants to know, hey, Donk, but before you answer this, I have, uh, I have a proposition for you. Um, he says, hey, Donk, what's your favorite brand of rum? Now, before you answer this, I have a brilliant idea. You need to go to Europe and do a book signing in Europe and get us some of the Motorhead rum that is now available. Um but uh, and do this before the monsters of rock, so uh, you know we can uh, drink some rum before the fucking cruise, whatever. So, anyways, what's your uh, favorite brand of rum? Well, I there's so many amazing brands of, of rum out there. I I, I really lean towards uh, Sailor Jerry, American made Sailor Jerry rum. I, I I like the Kraken as well, another American made rum. I like American rums. I, I know I know. I drink this rum called pirate rum. That's very expensive. It's from Barbados or something. I, 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 I have a bottle of this pirate rum. It's spelled P Y R a T. I drink it on the rocks just to sipper on occasion, but sailor Jerry is just my go-to to just blow my brains out. You know, <laughs> no, I'm don't no, lie. It's my, it's my favorite rum, and I and I and I mix it very clean. I use ginger and bitters. I make my own drink. I don't drink That's any our word. Coca-Cola. 
right? I don't drink Coca-Cola. I hate soda pop. I'm sugar-free, basically. And and I, I make my own Smart. drink with Perrier. This is how I make my rum. I crush ginger up in a, in a shaker, bitters, uh, Perrier, rum, and, and a lime on ice. That's how I drink my rum. You crush clean as a whistle. You crush ginger and you shake her. You're hard on your women. Yeah, in a shaker by I, you know, I, I go to the extra mile to make these drinks. I got right, the right. concoction. Don't the lie. Whole process got to go. Wait, through. wait, wait! Don't lie. You have a mangina and you promote <laughs> Malibu. Oh, no, not at all, brother. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. He's not fessing up to that. There is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a good drink. It's a good drink and no hangovers. Who, who wants a hangover at our age? I sure. Oh don't Jesus know. Christ! They're like two days long now. Been there, done That's that. why you're pounding Jack Daniel straight. Stay away from pop, soda pop. Oh, dude, it's all crap! It'll uh, kill pop, you. I know it is. I know it is. And I, my problem is, I have a sugar addiction, and I. Oh no! Uh, I have these goddamn energy drinks that I can't stop with. Uh, sugar uh, stage five, stage five, sugar stage sugar, five, stage, stage five, stage five. And I know oh, it's just. No. It's, I know you like that shit. I know, I know you like that shit. I know. I, I can't help it, but yeah. I. But I, I'm not saying that if Monster came to me and said, "Hey, Izzy, we think you are a talented motherfucker. We would like to give you money every month to promote our product." I would say yes. Um, but. Um, and uh, just a personal sidebar, I would marry Carissa Thompson right now. But anyways, um, <laughs> I actually, yeah. I, I saw her in person once because I used to cover the wild. I don't know if you know this, but I used to cover the wild. Um, no, the Minnesota and, wild? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, good like, hockey club. The fuck yeah. They released our time the other night. Yeah, they did. They released our time the other night. We won, but it That was a fun game to listen to on my way back from San Diego. It was um, a great game, actually. Entertaining, um, great. And I have no idea. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, I was at the morning skate. I think we were playing the Penguins, and it might have been mm, Crosby's Crosby Crosby's rookie year. And I was wearing this fucking hipster wannabe um, old school seventies uh, sport coat. And I remember I saw her. <laughs> Oh I saw I saw her <laughs> sitting in one of the seats because uh, during the morning skates, all the all the all the writers just kind of go down to the lower level, just kind of hang out and watch it, and then they you know go go down to the locker room yeah, right. afterwards. And uh, yeah. I, I tweeted her because I was going to say hi to her in the press box during the game, but she had like forty guys around her escorting her everywhere. And uh, I tweeted her, I'm like, ah, I wanted to say hi at the I was the guy with the stupid jacket, blah blah blah. She's like, oh my god, I love that stuff. I was like, God. Damn it, I missed my chance. <laughs> Dude. Swing and a miss. Oh, Swing yeah. and a miss. Uh, Willem, what else do you got there, buddy? Well, to be okay, honest, uh, I'm basically uh, looking forward to not only checking out the book, but look forward to seeing uh, Daryl and the Dwarves in literally a month plus. That's right. The monster's a rock, baby. So Yeah, that's, uh, you know what, that was like the wind, you know, you're going to hear us complain about our weather up here, right? I know it gets tiring, but <laughs> it, 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 I guess you guys live in beautiful California. We're, we're getting there. some rain. I, I li- Oh, you get rain. I know that's your winters. You get some rain. I, I lived in Long Beach for seven years and I just love that town. It was so I had some of my best memories there, but the winters up here are long and dark, and that's the issue. The sun—they're just dark, yeah. cold, dark, and it just—it just beats you up, man. It just and the older you get, the harder it gets. It just beats you up. So we weren't on Monsters of Rock Cruise last year, and, and that was killer for us. <laughs> we just had no, we didn't get away. We didn't get away at all. So we we love the Monsters of Rock for more than just the concerts and, and what it is. It gets us back in the sun, and and, and uh, we just we love. The cruise just is, is, is it's, it's it's amazing. It's just one of the coolest things that was ever invented, and I think Mork is the inventors of it. I know there's a million other cruises out there now, but to me, Mork is the authentic, real deal. Don't, don't you agree? I would absolutely agree. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, just, you know, they're they're the real deal. There's it seems like there's a thousand other cruises now. Every goddamn band on the planet's putting the cruise on now. Right. But a uh, more to more to us is is everything, and we're we're so thankful to Larry when in Harlan too that when they chose to pick the Canadian wankers and put us on there, <laughs> dude. <laughs> it's and, and beautiful. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, I am going to say this: if it wasn't for the Monsters of Rock cruise and Larry Morand and Gino and everybody in that crew, I would not be 
where I am today. And that's the yeah, honest I, truth. I, yeah, it's probably true, right? Because, I mean, you are that's how I know you, bro. Right? I, never, right? I didn't know who you were until then. I know, sure. and you probably uh, loathed that day that you met. It was like, fuck, dude, I met this dude. <laughs> And he was yeah, on the monster's cruise, and he was wearing this great. goddamn mankini. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what a what a uh, what an appearance, good, brother. Oh, you Scott, guys are all great. Uh, we love y'all. Uh, Scotty Strickland, uh, check in. He's a hoser. Um, and yep. Scotty is, uh, he's one of these guys where if you say the word racist, he has to drink. So that's his trigger word. We haven't said racist once yet. Racist, so that's, racist, 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 racist. We're not racist. That's but, why. But I know. Up. I know. So, but Scotty says, uh, one of my favorite memories of the Mork was 2014 sitting and drinking and talking hockey with Dunk at 2 a.m. watching Izzy and Brian's karaoke. Yeah. See, there you go. Uh, remember, that's the first one I went to. I got up and sang Sin City. You didn't even know I could sing. No, and You were I trying to help me, and I go, I got this one. I know the damn song. You were getting <laughs> this thing queued up. Going, here's where it is. It queues up here. I go, I know the tune. I just went out and killed it. It was fun as hell, man. We'll do it again, right? Well, absolutely. But see, we're going to do it again. You have to know this. You have to have a mentality at all times that to never give a drummer a microphone. <laughs> There's a lot of great singers that are drummers. I know. I, okay, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should. I should. I should rephrase that to talk. Um, oh, okay. Singing is great. Singing is great. Yeah. But once the drummers get on the mic and start talking like Lars, it's like, dude, just yeah. shut up. Just get, go, <laughs> well, go back. Um, yeah, well, not, not um, all of them have a, You're right. Not all of them have a knack for that one. I got you. I'm with you on that. Dunk. Right, let me pull this. Let me pull this up. I wanted. I want to tell you where I'm going to be in Tampa. That's where please, we're done right here. We, please we can do. go try to catch a West Coast hockey game. We'll hang up. Okay. Let me. I need to get pull my phone away from my ear to get get this name of this bar. I'm going to be at. Okay. Give me a All second. Right. All right. Okay, yeah. Handle seconds. your business. Handle your business. Take care of that. Um, while Donk is uh, taking care of that, I want to tell you guys about. A&P Productions Laser Engraving Division. That's APLasers.com. I still have I still have one of the roadie packs left, which I probably will auction off again for the Monsters of Rock Cruise. Um, it comes with a flask, comes with a Zippo-type lighter, comes with a dog tag, and a flashlight. And uh, we'll do that and the picks, and the winner will get to uh, hang out with me, and I will, I will not probably buy them dinner when we got off the boat or maybe the free buffet whatever works or you could be my roadie for a day whatever so the uh, casey powell won that last year i think it went for like 130 dollars um this year hopefully we can top that and also so check those guys out a p laser productions uh, APLasers.com. dude they actually laser engraved a hot dog bun this is how good they are. Um, and also, please, and I'm going to talk to you about this when we get off the air, John Palumbo Design. I love me some John Palumbo. Um, John Palumbo Design, you need a, you have your website, you got a band, you need a logo, you need anything. You talk to John Palumbo Design, and he will take care of you because I love me some John Palumbo. That's right, John Palumbo Design. So, Dunk, you got those dates in front of you? Yeah, I do, bud. Okay, so... Uh, I usually try to go, I'm a big sports guy, as everybody that knows me well knows I, I love hockey and I love football. So I'm a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan. So every year I fly down for at least one game. And this weekend is the game. And I'm going to see the Saints, which I'm really happy about because I really respect Drew Brees. So I'm going to get to go see the Saints in the box this Sunday. So I'm very excited about that. But nice. a good, good friends of mine have arranged for me to do a book signing, uh, in Tampa on the Saturday night, this Saturday night, I'm at Yeoman's Cask and Lion Club, which is right by the Tampa Bay Lightning's arena. And uh, then we're going to watch the Lightning after the book signing. So it's a seven. Very nice. You know, my book, my book signing is six o'clock, or no, sorry, seven till nine is the book signing. And then it's just a big party. And there's a band playing at this place and everything. So I'm really looking forward to this. And it's just a, really, it's just an excuse to hang with, with the fans and a lot of morkers are there and, Right. And uh, yeah, and I'm going to travel with books. I'm going to have the books. So if anyone doesn't want to get one, they can go to Yeoman's Cask and Lion. This is called this club sports bar there. Nice. In downtown, downtown Tampa. So that's where I'll be Saturday night. This Saturday, it's the 8th, December. And then I'll be at the Bucks game 
partying with the pirates, uh, there you KBR go. pirates there. The, the KBR is a whole clan of actual pirates that go to that Gasparilla <laughs> and all that every year, and they got a big ship and everything. It's, just, it's so fun, man. Their tailgate is a goddamn pirate ship on wheels, a huge pirate ship. Of course ship. it it's is. hilarious. Of course yeah, it is. I met these guys. KBR is what they're called. They're not... So I'm ha- I'm rolling with them at the game. So if anyone's at the tailgate, they can come and hang with me. And uh, uh, go go Bucks. There you go. That's, that's that. Uh, Bruce. So that, uh, that's it. Bruce says mine's getting dunk stick dunk sticks in person. Dunk stick that could be very gay. Dunk sticks <laughs> in person at the airport flying into Tampa for MORC 2017. There you go. Uh, oh War- right right. Yeah, Ward says... I'm bringing sticks, too. I, I am going to have some drumsticks with me because I have a custom drumstick, and people ask me, so yes, I will bring some sticks for you guys Nice, Tampa. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and I know customized drumsticks are not cheap. I was going to get some for the Cruiser Jam, but uh, then I found yeah. out they're really fucking expensive, so I didn't. Yeah. Um, well, I have an endorsement with the company, though, so it's a signature stick. That's all. There you so, go. Yeah. That helps. Yeah. That helps. So, uh, that's, Ward- all, that's all that is. Different thing. Ward says, good times having Dunk playing bartender in my suite on the MORC. Oh, that's right. That was the year that he won the fucking suite. That was so fun, man. Yeah. When, they, yeah. when they won that big, the big mansion, as Gene Simmons' <laughs> suite or whatever he was in. Dude, that was off, off the charts. And Sebastian was on the boat that that's year. That's right, yeah. dude. Didn't you kick it's me so out of your fucking crazy. suite? I don't think he likes cruises. He got all weird on that cruise. He didn't even know who I was, for Christ's sake. I've known the guy my whole life. Well, he uh, was in that room. He was and, looking at me like I go. It was bizarre. I go, you, you been? A, have you been on a cruise before? He goes, No, you. <laughs> he looked at me like he had no idea who I was. It was so weird. Uh, the thing I've noticed about Baz, and, and I don't say this in a in a negative way at all, because every time I've met Baz when he's been sober, he's been so fucking cool. But when Baz yeah. is uh, over the edge. Um, yeah, Baz is. Uh, it's like, and he admits it, dude. It's like fucking. Oh, absolutely. Who wouldn't yeah. admit it? With too much wine, too much weed. You're like, ah, da, da, okay, Fred. Right? Yeah. Like, you sounded like Ace Fraley there, by the way. Yeah. Um, Great. So, uh, so how can uh, uh, people want to find the book? They want to find you. Where can they find you? Yeah. Well, uh, the best place is just dunkspiratechop dot com. That's the best place to find me. And, and obviously on Twitter, it's Twitter at Daryl Dwarf. Uh, it's Daryl Miller with an A on Facebook or Daryl Dwarf on Facebook and Instagram as well as D Dwarf. So I got Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can find me there. No problem. It's, it's Miller. I, don't, I thought it was Millar. I no, thought it was man, like no, fancy, no, you know, Malar. Uh, no, uh, no, it isn't. A lot of people think that it's just it's A R is Scottish, if you want to know the truth, and E R is English. That's all it is. But they're both pronounced Miller. Very well, very well. Uh, Willem, do you uh, got anything you want to pimp? You got your website. You got your uh, Kanak shit. Of course, uh, knec dot com. Of course, the show The Vault on Sundays. This coming Sunday, we'll have a special show. It'll be the um, not a rebroadcast. It'll be the first airing of the Strike Fest festival that took place back in June. It was Nasty Savage, Exciter, and Razor going to play all their sets in their entirety because I'm going to be out of town, and you're going to hear those three bands who. Uh, really kicked ass at the strike fest so again starting at 10 wow. o'clock 10 o'clock 10 a.m pacific standard time nasty savage exciter and razor and uh, exciter man boys from ottawa pounding metal that's right and i know those boys Dan that, so- and the boys, yeah. that cool. sounded very anvil of you <laughs> i know pounding metal was one of their hits though right well, yeah yes early, that's awful. early hits exciter P- pounding i know pounding metal metal or metal no, pounding metal. Pounding metal is all violence and force. Uh, Will, yeah, you where, would know that, Will. Uh, he's an uh, encyclopedia. He he is he's a walking he he's walking Wikipedia because he could be wrong <laughs> at many times. But careful with Wikipedia. That's a uh, anyone can edit that. No I one. Know. So. I know. And anybody could edit this too. <laughs> this is true. If the, if the titties are nice enough, anybody could edit this. Well, we we the titties are always uh, bountiful at our Sunset Strip burlesque. That'll be on the 16th, but uh, that's... There you go, at the Rainbow Bar and Grill, that's Yes, right. upstairs. That's right. I gotta uh, get my ass back to L.A., boys. I yeah, love that you do. That's, I haven't been back in a while. I got a lot of good friends there, so I will make a point to visit soon, and when I do, if I come out on my own or whatever, I'll bring you guys and we'll go out and do it up. 
Fucking okay. A right. Uh, Will, uh, people want to find you online? Metal DJ Will, or do your socials. And of course, KNEC, Rainbow Bar and Grill. And, uh, you know, that's uh, that's where I can be found. All right, there you go. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Miller, please hold on the line. We're going to say goodbye off the air. I'm going to click my uh, outro music here. You have anything, anything you want to say to the fans before we uh, make a tree and get the fuck out of here? No, I'm good. Just thanks for all the support. It's ah, always dude. been there for us. Great, Fucking... great fan base we have. We love you all. There you go. All right. And the outro music ensues. I'm muting you. I'm muting the Willem. Ladies and gentlemen, that has been another effing podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please don't forget to listen to me every morning, Monday through Friday, on the Monsters of Rock Radio on the Dash Radio Network. Find us on the Dash Radio app. It is free satellite, motherfuckers. It is great. Um, also, if you just want to stream it on a computer, mon- it is uh, dashradio.com slash monsters of rock. Um, please hit up all the social media. Of course, the Facebook page is another from podcast, but you can find me all the way across the board at Real Izzy Presley. Find out everything that I'm doing entertainment wise. And uh, Soundcheck Live this month is going to be the day after, yes, the day after Christmas, December 26th. And you Monsters of Rock cruisers are going to love it. It is 80s rock extravaganza. It is going to be the MTV era of 80s rock. It is going to be fun. Come on down. No cover. Hollywood and Highland. Uh, See you at 4 a.m. tomorrow morning. Oh, that's fucking early. I do love you all. Uh, Next week, I don't know. We'll figure out as it goes. So don't forget what I lack in talent I make up for in cock. It's another fucking podcast.